Alrighty guys, we're back for some mono black aggro and this is a Dominaria United Standard Brew. We're going to go over the deck then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to you guys. Also, we got that Discord link down in the description, I highly recommend joining that up. What do we got in the deck? I decided to hop on the bandwagon. Finally, Mono Black is everywhere right now <laughs> on the ladder of both the aggro version and the control version. Uh, so, yeah, this is just my version of it, which includes four Concealing Curtains, a card that you won't see in aggro very often. But the last time we played Mono Black aggro, this card was an MVP and it put in a lot of work. So, Concealing Curtains is a 1 mana defender wall. <laughs> it's a 0 4, but for 3 mana, you could transform Concealing Curtain. You can activate only as a sorcery. When it transforms, it comes back as Revealing Eye, a 3 4 with Menace. When this creature transforms into Revealing Eye, target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non land card from it. If you do, that player discards that card, then draws a card. So, yeah. We don't care too much about the drawing the card part of this because if you can just look in the opponent's hand and take their meat hook away, that's actually really good. And then on top of that, the 3 4 Menace, <laughs> you're going to be able to swing in with this often and it's going to do a lot of damage. So, We've got four Cult Conscripts. This is a new creature from Dominaria. So, it is a one mana, two one. It enters the battlefield tapped. You can pay two to return Cult Conscript from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only if a non-skeleton creature died under your control this turn, which is going to be every other creature in the deck except for the Cult Conscript. This card looks pretty darn good, guys. It looks really good, actually. Got a couple cut downs in here, and only two because I wanted two Infernal Grasps as well. The more I play with cut down, the more I realize it just doesn't hit as much as you would hope it would hit, but it's still a pretty good card and definitely worth testing two of in here. But if you find that you're just not able to kill most creatures, you might just want to go up to four infernal grasps, honestly, so we'll see. Uh, oh yeah, if you don't know what this does, it is a one mana instant destroy target creature with total power and toughness five or less, so yeah got four evolved sleepers i finally get to try out the card it is a one mana one one for one mana you can uh have evolved sleeper become a human cleric with base power and toughness two two nice you can pay two mana if evolved sleeper is a cleric put a death touch counter on it and it becomes a phyrexian human cleric with base power and toughness three three okay uh, for three mana if evolved sleeper is a phyrexian you can put a plus one plus one counter on it then you draw a card and you lose one life yeah and i'm pretty sure you can do that multiple times too there, there's nothing on this card that says like <laughs> that you could only do it once so i think you can pay that three all the time and just continue to draw cards and put counters on this so that's pretty good guys that's kind of our main card draw in the deck i'll go over another way that we can draw cards too uh but Overall, I think this card is going to put in work. I think the Death Touch is going to do a lot against, like, the Mono Black Control and everything, which uses cards like a Shieldred here, the Apocalypse, to block everything. <laughs> this card is particularly hard to get around with Mono Red, I found, so we got to figure out a way around this. I'll go over it in just a second. We have two Okiba Reckoner Raids in here as well. The first two abilities are way better than you'd expect. Just being able to uh, ping that damage through while getting a little bit of life gain can go a long way, but eventually it flips into the Road Captain, a 2-2 with Menace. We're not too worried about the vehicle ability on here because we don't have any vehicles in the deck. Just the 2-2 Menace happens to be pretty good and overall a pretty aggressive card. Our two-drop spot, I already went over the Grasp. We have four Knight of Dusk's Shadow. So this is a two mana 2-2 two -two with Menace. Your opponents can't gain life. Oh, buddy, I would have loved to have this uh, when all the clerics were floating about, huh? Either way, you could also just pay two mana. Knight of Dusk's Shadow gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So later on in the match, 
if you're swinging in with this and it goes unblocked, you can just buff it a bunch of times. Like if you have six mana open and you got nothing else to do, make it a five five with Menace. Why not? I think this card looks freaking terrific and it's uncommon. Ah, oh, I love it. Let's go. <laughs> we got four Tenacious Underdogs naturally, a very aggressive card and that Blitz will win you games. That's all I got to say about that. Got a single Meat Hook Massacre. We're not going for the control side of things, but it sure seems necessary to at least squeeze one of these in here, and it can actually help us close a game too. We have so many creatures running down on the board, so whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Yeah, even if you're not removing anything from the opponent, just drop it for two mana. That way, if they ever wipe your board, you'll at least get some extra damage through too, so... I think it's definitely worth the one of here. Also, there is a lot of aggro floating about as well, so sometimes they're going to outpace you, and Meat Hook will help you stabilize. In our three drop spot, we have four Shakedown Heavies. Three mana, six, four with Menace, and this is our other way to draw cards in the deck. So, whenever Shakedown Heavy attacks, Defending Player may have you draw a card. If they do, untap Shakedown Heavy and remove it from combat. So, if they're getting low, they're going to do that often. But if they do that too often, then we're going to get way too much value out of our deck. <laughs> I think Shakedown Heavy is terrific, and I think it blocks really, really well. And, you know, there is actually a lot of mono red right now, which is freaking awesome. <laughs> As someone who loves mono red, I'm glad to see it uh, being played. It's kind of hard for them to swing in against a Shakedown Heavy, and then they have to compete with it as we're drawing cards with it, and yeah, th this card's terrific. We got three Liliana of the Veils, my first time playing with this card too. Three mana, three loyalty Planeswalker. The plus one, each player discards a card. That is each player, so you gotta be prepared for us to discard too, but discarding cards like Tenacious Underdog isn't that bad, or extra land, or... We have so many one drops. What if we just run down our whole board, uh, our whole hand onto the board, and then whenever it comes time to discard, we actually just don't discard anything, and the opponent does instead. But what's really cool here is the minus two target player sacrifices a creature. So sometimes, especially if you go first and you can get this out on turn three, and you make them sacrifice their only creature, th th that just goes a very long way, doesn't it? Either way, how many board states can you think of where just having the opponent sacrifice a creature and then full swinging, like, that seems pretty powerful, and then they still have to deal with the Planeswalker on the following turns, too. The minus six, man, the number of times I actually ultimate a Planeswalker is uh, close to zero, like, literally. The entire, my entire lifetime of playing Magic, which I guess isn't as long as some people, <laughs> I, I've almost never ultimate did a, a Planeswalker. So either way, I'll go over it real quick. So for the minus six, separate all permanents target player controls into two piles. That player, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, that player sacrifices all permanents in the pile of their choice. Honestly, I, I don't know if that's even that good <laughs> in comparison to the top two abilities, but We'll see. On the very top end of the build, we do have the Shieldred, the Apocalypse, a four mana, four or five with death touch. Man, that's chunky. Whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. Okay, so hold on. You're telling me that if I'm swinging with Shakedown and the opponent decides that they don't want to take six damage, they <laughs> have this untap. We draw and maybe we have Shieldred and we get to gain life too. Oh buddy, that's actually insane. But then they decide to push the card just a little bit further. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. <laughs> so that's going to help us close out games easily. If we're up against control or anything like that, they need to remove this before they decide to draw cards. But sometimes they got to draw cards to be able to remove this. So like dang dude and then if we're up against other aggro decks it's going to be super tough for them to remove this like first of all cut down doesn't hit it they'd probably have to like use an infernal grasp if that's the kind of uh aggro that they're playing i, I don't know we'll see man we'll see i think it's going to be a great top end we got 
23 land and one of them is an abandoned mire and i don't know what it is with my aggro builds recently but they've all had like 23 mana and i have no idea why that's been happening a couple honorable mentions over here guys graveyard trespasser i think shakedown heavy is going to be better right now but trespasser is amazing and i very well might be wrong because trespasser might be better because it can help us exile if we are up against like a mirror match we can grab cards like Tenacious Underdog out of their grave or the Cult Conscript, get that out of their grave too. It's really, really something to think about here. Invoke Despair as well. This could easily be a one of on the top end of an aggro build, but I don't know how often we're actually going to hit five mana. So I didn't want it in this particular version of the deck. And if you, <laughs> I guess it really depends because it could be a great way to draw more cards too. And it really works with the Shieldred as well. So. Yeah, something to think about. All right, let's take it into ranked and uh, see how it does, huh? All right, right into the first match. Let's do it. I'm excited. Ooh. Opponent goes first, too. Oh, I don't, I, I don't like this hand. We only have two mana. We have so many one dra There we go. I don't even know. Do we ditch a swamp or the shieldred? I'm going to ditch the swamp. I hope that's an okay choice. We still have so many swamp in the deck that the odds of us not drawing one in like the next three turns is probably pretty low. So because we drew the underdog, I'm going to start with the conscript instead of the sleeper. If we didn't get the T drop, I would have went sleeper, so that way we had something to do on the uh, next turn. Okay, so the first strike on Thalia is actually really, really bad for us. We got some mono white? No, never mind. <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> that That is the new uh, caves card. I wonder what this could be, huh? Oh, we're good. Oh, definitely going no blocks here. Definitely. Guardian, nice. Okay, so we did get that third. I'm okay with swinging into this, especially if they discard. I think they're going to take the five here, though. Let's swing. I really doubt they're going to discard just for the sake of keeping the Guardian, really. And they go for the underdog here, too. We'll eventually be able to blitz it back. Ditch a Valorous Stance, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go Evolve Sleeper and go ahead and buff that on up. Um, I guess we can play the other Evolved Sleeper. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot that we have to start at the very top, so we might as well run this all down. So no cut down, that's good. It was still sticking there, so I think it was sticking from the Guardian's ability. I think he can do that multiple times. Yeah, you could just discard. What if Guardian is a great card in, like, reanimator decks or something? That would be pretty sick. Yeah, they go for the Enlist. So 4-2, no great blocks unless we want to force them to discard again. We could. We totally could. Now, let's take the four. They're tapped out. Um, if they pass, then we got to anticipate like a Wandering Emperor. So gold Sentinel. Oh, soldiers? Is this soldiers? Oh, this, this is soldiers, guys. That looks really fun. Okay. Crap, guys. This is not good. They got rid of our underdog, too. We need to get Shieldred down as soon as possible, so any land off the top would be welcomed. So swing here. Let's full swing and hope that we don't just die next turn. Because they they could easily... They could easily drop that new soldier. Alright, let's get a little bit of extra damage here. And I'm probably going to drop the raid so we gain two. So this is six damage going through. How do you guys feel about that? Keep it at the... Keep it at the 6 and then drop the Reckoner Raid? 
it does suck that we can't remove Thalia yet, uh, and so the Reckoner raid costs more instead of like getting the Evolved Sleeper down too. But I, I think gaining a little bit of life here, uh, draining their life a little bit. So they can actually enlist this with the Sentinel and then keep Thalia back as a blocker. They, they opt to not do that, but the first strike on Thalia, they keep the Sentinel back as a blocker. Uh, I guess that makes sense since we can make the Evolved Sleeper a 3-3. That still blocks it well. <gasps> Archangel. Oh, no. That gains him life, too. Oh, no. It has lifelink. Oh, we need removal. We need removal, guys. The good news is the Shieldred is pretty good, but the Enlist still... The Enlist on this Guardian still gets over it beautifully. So we're, we're going to have a problem. Hopefully Shieldred could start to balance the scales here as we both just dropped our bomb 4 drop. Well, for them it was a 5 drop because they kicked it, but... Yeah, we need to see some of our removal. We don't have too much of it packed into the deck, but we definitely have it in here. Oh, Valorous Stance! Oh no, guys! Oh no! <laughs> Oh man, hey, you know what this looks like? This is like mono white with a splash of uh, black, and I'm guessing a splash of red as well for the kicker cost on the Archangel. What do you guys think? That's probably what it is, huh? Probably what it is. Right, so I'm going to block the Guardian and make them discard that card in hand. Oh, they go for it. Yeah, they're going to let the first strike go through first. Maybe they just want to play it. Maybe they... Okay, they must like whatever's in their hand. Might be another Valorous Stance, honestly. Yeah, we got to do something about that. Death Touch. A Shakedown Heavy is pretty good, isn't it? Let's run down our hand and hope that we find removal for the Archangel soon. We could try to keep up with the lifelink. I don't plan on blocking with our 2-2 sleeper, so we'll see. We'll see, guys. Yeah, they, they didn't want to discard whatever was in their hand, so maybe it's another Archangel, honestly. Ah, oh, that would be so bad. Yep, back up to 15. We're down to 4. Oh, no. Yeah, it was. I bet that's what they ended up keeping last time. So they get to ping the sleeper or the captain. They go for the face. Nice. Yeah, that yeah, is a nail in the coffin, unfortunately, guys. I don't see a way around this. Not without removal, but then we needed we needed even more removal. Spend some mana here. So I don't mind how our deck performed by any means. They could take all this damage, yeah. They So we, we run it all out. They weren't going to let us draw off the heavy in, in hopes of anything. So Plus the lifelink too. Yeah. So we get the air. They actually let the angel die to the death touch too. Huh. Interesting. Oh. Not again, guys. Why do I keep doing this with the uh, test matches? <laughs> well, I guess the overall win rate for the deck is 60%. And this version, I did this yesterday too. No, uh, two days ago with my mono green aggro. I guess this one isn't that different overall. The mono green aggro, I did the two test matches, but that was like a completely different build. So I'm, I'm not too upset with myself for not uh, refreshing that up there for the video. <laughs> Good hand. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Oh my goodness. Need to get a, a drink. I forgot to bring water down. I only have coffee. Uh-oh. All right. Opponent mulliganed. Start with the uh, curtain here. 
start with the curtain into the uh, Dusk's Shadow because I don't know if we're actually going to go like turn three Evolved Sleeper. If that makes sense. We could have went Evolved Sleeper first, but now we can on turn three uh, do the curtains right away. Which is pretty good. Let's check this out, huh? Gonna have some removal right at, right out the gate here. Ah, oh, they hit the curtain too. Ah, oh, that kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, the cut down actually coming in handy for an opponent <laughs> for once. It, it, I'm telling you guys, it doesn't hit a lot. It hits a lot in our deck, unfortunately, but... Yeah, we have an Infernal Grasp this time round. Um, let's go swing. Let's run out the sleeper. Let's run it out. It's, look, it's looking like we're going to have some control over there. Five color control, potentially. Could be Esper, but they have the garden, so five colors most likely. Wedding announcement is pretty bad for us because we have a lot of menace creatures that... Another sleeper. I, I don't know when we actually want to play around a board wipe is the problem. We full swing. I wonder what they double block. Let's full swing. They don't know what's in our hand. We could have our own cut down, for example. So we end up trading with the cult conscript here. All right, let's get the heavy down then. I like that over running out the evolved sleeper. And buffing everything. Leyline is going to hit the heavy. Ooh, two mana for that. Oh, that's rough, man. They still have three mana open. Mm -hmm. Wedding announcement gets some more blockers. Jildred might eat a counter here. They do got blue open. All right, let's start with the swing. They are at 11, so... We go for the block. Okay. So we'll go ahead and buff it and save it. And then we'll drop our other sleeper. Or we could keep the Infernal Grasp open too. We don't know when the board wipe is going to happen is the problem. Alright. I'm going to keep it open because we also have the Cult Conscript. So if they end up wiping the board... Oh, that's bad. Okay. Yeah, second ley line down. At least they're out of the opponent's deck. Well, I mean, they probably have two more as well, but... They get rid of that. I wonder if it's because of the life gain here. Yeah, they do get the 1-1. One, one. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Evolved Sleeper now. Since this is the their end step. They got the 2-2. Two, two. I, I would love to let this hit the board, guys. I really would. The problem is, I'm not sure it actually does hit the board. We can actually buff this. I do think they end up chumping regardless. We can actually go Concealing uh, Curtain and then try to check their hand here, too. Let's see if the Concealing Curtain hits. It's, it's exactly like I said, man. We want to get counter spells and removal out of their hand, so let's see what we hit here. Whoa, okay. This is a Xur Eternal deck, huh? That's pretty cool, man. Hopefully they don't draw removal now. <laughs> they go for the Abandoned Mire ability. What do they want to hit back to hand? The Xur, naturally, naturally. This is scary, because enchantment creatures, they control, have lifelink, and death touch, so they can just drop that. So, Infernal Grasp does take care of it. <gasps> no, meat hook for four? Really? That's what they drew? Oh no, guys. Oh no. Okay, all right. Shieldred can successfully hit the board at least. Um, so what this is going to do is at least it's going to start draining their life. The, that That's a problem though. Not being able to hit meat hook, they're going to be able to start to get lifelink from their enchantments here too. Um, does it have haste? It does. It's a 7-7 seven, seven Death Touch Lifelink. <gasps> Dude. <laughs> oh, no. They're going to run away with it, guys. We got to do something. Um, If we kill Xur, does it keep the Lifelink Hexproof death, death Touch? 
I don't think it would. Either way, we gotta kill Zer and we gotta start getting this damage through. Let's do it. We're gonna go down to 13 here. It does lose the lifelink. That is excellent news, guys. The question here is, are they gonna be able to kill us if we swing with the Shieldred? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. They're gonna need some great draws here. <laughs> what a match, man. This is, I'm on the edge of my seat right now. This is my first time going up against Zer. I'm gonna take the seven because I don't think they have five damage in hand. Not not with a deck like this. Me hook for five. <laughs> oh no, guys. Oh no, they're back up to six. Oh no, we're gonna be forced to block with the shakedown heavy. At least we can cast the cult cons uh, conscript here. Yet yeah, drawing two. Oh my goodness. I think it's the opponents. <laughs> I think it's the opponents, guys. Wow, that's insane. A good game opponent, but wait, I gotta drop my favorite emote. <laughs> Man, they ran away with that one. Uh, crazy top decks for the opponent there. I feel like that could have gone either way easily. We had a lot of power there, guys. Uh, let's see if we could actually get some victories in the video though. I have a lot of faith in the deck, honestly. I, I think we got a little bit unlucky, especially in that last one. So let's see if we can pull it together here. <laughs> the double meat hook off the top followed by the Zer. That was something else, guys. Actually, what I really liked about that too was the opponent's use of the abandoned Mire to bring back the Zer. That was actually really sick. I think abandoned Mire is often overlooked in that sense. Um, where, yeah, if you lose your main creature, just, I'm gonna go the, uh, Reckoner Raid here so we get the 2-2 Menace sooner. Anyways, yeah, if you lose your favorite creature, bring it back with the Abandoned Mire. You don't gotta bring something back from the milled cards, you know? We have two open. I really don't want to lose, I'd rather lose an Evolved Sleeper here, so... A meat hook for one would be devastating next turn, so I am going to buff this. I was thinking, like, if we drop the other Evolved Sleeper, we have more damage. But everyone has their meat hooks, and everyone has their meat hooks available at all times, apparently. So we got to be very careful. I'm wondering if we buff the Evolved Sleeper for more damage here. Because that, what this lets us do is it lets us outrace the meat hook again. So it's going to be a cut down on the sleeper. Unfortunately, that just does it. Yeah. I'm still going to run out the other sleeper, even though all this talk about meat hook. We're already falling very far behind, unfortunately. Just from, uh, just from a, a couple slow plays. Liliana, okay. Are we get we ditched the road captain because the sleeper can uh, continue to buff. So I'm actually gonna run down one of the. Okay, <laughs> let me think about this for a second. So three of those, huh? Let's see if this is gonna be removal. We try to hit Liliana here. All right, so I'm gonna keep the Evolved Sleeper's ability open. Have one, we can buff the Dusk's, uh, Knight of Dusk's Shadow too. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, this is gonna be tough. Yep, four colors from the opponent. Cruelty, Cruelty of Gix. J Jix? I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah, so they're gonna definitely target our hand here because they don't want anything too buff, but we don't have too much for them to grab, luckily. 
Okie dokies. That's a scary card, by the way, so. And it's too bad. I wonder what happens if we do this twice. Nothing, right? It just activates, yeah. <laughs> I, that's what I was thinking, but. So we have a good swing. I can't imagine that we're up against anything other than control right now. It's probably not even mid-range, honestly. So let's buff this and probably get... Can we just buff it again, guys? Let's just buff it again. Let's do it. Because it's a 4-4 now, and we get to draw a card, which is probably going to be very important. Point us down to 10. I... I, I believe in this deck, guys. I really do. There's definitely a lot of power here. Got a lot of, like, uh, front-end creatures. A lot of one-drops, a lot of two-drops. Um, but it, it shouldn't matter too much because that that's kind of the point, right? We're running down threats every turn. <laughs> Meat Hook for four. Why? Why Meat Hook? Oh, man. I know all my fellow aggro players have been feeling these meat hooks with me. I just know it. We're gonna run down the underdog it's for so many reasons. We get to draw here. Um, <laughs> we get the damage through now. Just two damage because, of course, uh, meat hook has the gain life ability on it over here. Meat Hook's rough, dude. Meat Hook's the reason that everyone is playing. They took my underdog! You monster! Did they not have anything better to grab? Our creature from a graveyard. No, yeah, underdog was a great grab for them. That's kind of my fault for running that down, too. Liliana drops, yeah. Graveyard Trespasser, get rid of uh, whatever you feel like, I suppose, since you already have my underdog. Dang, guys, and they're back up to six. That is not the draw we needed. All right, couple cult conscripts gonna hit the board and hopefully we can manage to survive a couple more turns here so we can draw maybe a Shieldred. Um, we wanna run everything down, that way they're plus on the Liliana, it doesn't affect us. What is happening okay second trespasser we're not going to be able to get creatures through very easily but what is this doing in here going to be able to gain a life off the trespasser as well they do full swing so we're going down to 10. okay oh, another swamp off the top and we're going to have to save these back as blockers um <laughs> goes to night time Woo, buddy, tough uphill battles, but I'm not giving up on the deck yet, guys. It doesn't look like we're going to get there against this one, but... Okay, they're going to grab the last two. Our graveyard is officially going to be empty. Uh, we're just going to take four here. I'm going to take the four because... Well, I guess... Yeah, they're up to 10. Okay, we got our own Liliana. <laughs> so they could... We might be able to get our Tenacious Underdog back. Let's see. Let's see. They could also just get rid of the Claw so we don't get our Underdog. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we will go ahead and drop them the GG. And of course, my favorite emote coming into play once again. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Let's get into the next one. Good game, opponent. Very good game. Uh, the, the meat hooks have been devastating to this deck so far, but yeah, it's okay. 100% loss rate for the video so far. Total deck win rate, 42%, which is pretty, pretty bad, but <laughs> I'm not giving up yet, guys. We, we could get there. I know it. We can at least fit one or two more games in this video, and I just know we can get those victories. So let's do it. The matches, we've been getting right into these games really fast. There are a lot of people playing right now, which is awesome. Great hand. Yes. Okay. This is it, guys. 
this is it. We're going to go right into the cult conscript because it's extra damage early. And we're going first here too. So this is excellent. I couldn't ask for better. Start with the swing. Going evolved sleeper and then going right into the 2-2 cleric. Because we need to get over the, um, the cut down now too. Uh, there are a lot of people playing cut down and it, it's working out for them uh, when they're up against uh, this particular build. So now we get to see why Liliana is so powerful because we immediately get to uh, get rid of there because we were on because we were actually first. <laughs> so we get a great swing here and their tenacious underdog is a goner. Graveyard trespasser nice. Very nice. So, uh, Shieldred, right? We could also buff the sleeper. We could also... If we full swing, they might just take the three or the two from this because they don't want to trade. I'm also okay with the discard ability on the Liliana. What do we do with Liliana when we don't want to discard, guys? See what they end up doing here. I'm curious. Because we don't need to drop the Shieldred this turn. Because it might just die to an Infernal Grasp next turn. They're going to take the four. I think we let the Liliana die. How do you guys feel about that? I mean, I guess we could always block with the Shieldred too, but... Do we plus one? How does this work? Do we really want to discard a card here? I don't think so. I want both of these. All right, end turn. <laughs> yeah, that's a little awkward, isn't it? <laughs> you guys will have to let me know. I know this is a reprint. I've never played with this card in the past. Um, yeah, Infernal Grasp right away for that. Kind of sucks. But we have our own Infernal Grasp if they play like a blocker down or something. So back up to seven. The Liliana is out of here. Would have died even if we plussed it too. So we would have just lost an extra... A card so all right let's go ahead and start to buff this actually let's just buff it all the way this turn buff it all the way that's six damage that's a lot and then that like makes their own infernal grasp obsolete too oh they do get to gain life here from the glutton though that's pretty scary actually if if it it, it could be a meat hook too me hook doesn't hit as much as they would hope. It's good damage. It's good damage. They get to grab both of these, but they're out of mana now, so they need to save the blocker. So all we gotta do... Oh, Shieldred works too, but this is, this is a little bit better. Yes, I'm sure. Discard a card. Oop. We gotta resolve it first. Yeah, GG opponent. Hey, we finally got there, guys! Ha <laughs> ha! It's a fast game. Let's get one more in. Uh, let's see if we can get the two victories. We'll see. Um, I had a lot of faith in the deck. I felt like we were getting unlucky. I think we were. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that final game victory as well. You guys will have to let me know in the comments too if uh, if you think we we're getting a little bit unlucky in some of those matches. The me hooks are devastating, guys. Me hooks really just. Uh, it has to be one of the most annoying cards in Standard, uh, but also just one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful card right now. W what do you guys think? What do you guys think is the most powerful card? Oh, uh, Concealing Curtain. You know what? I'm going to go Sleeper this time. We don't have a guaranteed third mana, so Sleeper might just be a better... Ledger Shredder is a great blocker, but we're going to take that out immediately. Cut down, finally hit a card, guys. We did it. Ha <laughs> ha We finally got a creature with cut down. Yeah, playing Ledger Shredder without um, some form of protection is pretty risky, but yeah, they had the Drake, so that makes a little bit of sense then. So if they have the protection for the Drake, so they're going to take this. All right. I'm going to make it a little bit of extra damage. We do get to uh, buff 
the sleeper. And I'm thinking we get the concealing curtain down. Because next turn we can have it be a 3-4. They're already at 13. We can we can totally do this. Homestead Courage, draw a card. Probably Homestead Courage again here. Get the Shredder down. Okay. Shieldred. We need an extra mana for that. Does have Death Touch. I'm okay with going the Concealing Curtain route. But I feel like they're just going to play out whatever's in their hand now anyways. So Fading Hope is a card that would exist in a deck like this. Uh, Simple Protection could exist as well. Let's see if they even let us hit a card here. It, it might be a land and like a Shore Up or something, right? I think that's what the new card's called. Shore Up. Uh, Homestead Courage and Slip Out the Back. Yeah, so Slip Out the Back... Homestead Courage is scary and all, but that they have flashback on that, so it's full swing. Got Death Touch on the Sleeper, and we have Menace on the Revealing Eye. So as long as we don't just straight up die next turn, then it's not looking terrible for us. The flying is pretty scary, but they're definitely going to get the Connive on the Shredder this turn. They can get a, draw, a couple draws off the Homestead Courage with the Drake. So they can find like an extra mana. They can really pop off, guys. This is scary. They got the mana. Yep, Virtuoso doesn't have haste, luckily. Still very, very scary, though. They are down to five because they just took one from the pain. Oh, yeah, the, the Thran portal. Come on, guys. We can do this. We can get there. The opponent's deck is very scary, though. They're going to buff the Virtuoso for uh, blocker and then for next turn, probably. So they are down to four. Come on. They took the other pain from the wastes. Come on, guys. We could do this. <laughs> Should have a couple damage just from the Reckoner raid, too. Combat research. <laughs> yeah, they're keeping their hand nice and stocked. They're going to swing in and draw another card here. Um, okay, Knight of Dusk's Shadow. So the Shieldred would have been the best thing to do here, for sure. So the double strike on the Virtuoso makes it so that way the Evolved Sleeper uh, gets killed regardless. So we, we can force some blocks if we go ahead. So they block here, they double block here. We can force some blocks. Because they don't know it's in our hand. Let's swing. Let's do it. Let's see where they end up blocking. Because, okay, we can buff the sleeper. They're going to take the three from the revealing eye. Down to one. Reckoner raid for the win. <laughs> Let's go, guys. We got there. Okay, total deck win rate, 55%. There were games at the beginning here that were test matches. I don't remember the test matches. I apologize. When the set first came out, I did take a bunch of uh, aggro decks into, uh, I think, right into ranked, honestly. <laughs> I don't remember them, but I don't think it was a very different version of this deck. So what we ended up doing today was three losses in a row and then two victories you know, the deck has power, so those three losses in a row, I don't know how common that's actually going to be. I do know one thing, Meat Hook is very scary, and so at every turn, you have to prepare for the Meat Hook somehow. Here's the deck list again. I liked it. I really liked it, actually. We proved in the last two games that we can totally get there, and there's actually a ton of power in the deck, and it's almost like... It's kind of relentless, isn't it? Evolved Sleeper was really good. Just having something to spend extra mana on while buffing it and getting over that meat hook. While we weren't able to get over some of the opponent's meat hooks because they were able to like meat hook for five relatively fast, <laughs> I, I think it's going to be very valuable. Uh, Concealing Curtains is awesome. It's exactly like I said, man. The Menace 3-4 is insane. It really, really is. 
Cult Conscript was kind of awesome too. Sweet little sweet little card here, but four of them might be too much. I gotta be real with you. The Reckoner Raid just guaranteeing that damage through on the first two turns and then eventually being a 2-2 Menace. Controversial? It might be. You might want to go up to four of these and drop down to two Cult Conscripts. I don't know if that's actually what we want to do. I do know we probably want a couple more Reckoner Raids, at least one more, something, something, man. Just having that guaranteed damage so that way... Well, first of all, another thing with these Sagas from Neon Dynasty is they're kind of meat hook proof too. When you originally play them and the opponent meat hooks your other creatures, this eventually flips into the road captain on like the turn after a meat hook or something. So now you still have some kind of board presence too. So I think this card's actually way more important than um, than just having two of them in, in a deck like this. Liliana was interesting. I think it totally works in an aggressive deck. I think it is good enough. I think I would drop down to two though and try to find more aggressive answers. Just more ways to get the damage to the opponent's face. Uh, even... Going down a Liliana and going up a single Meat Hook. And why Meat Hook, right? We didn't really see a lot of aggro there. Why Meat Hook? To balance out the opponent's Meat Hooks. And that's really it, honestly. Um, the fact that the opponents get to gain life <laughs> whenever your creatures die. Ah, oh, man, this card. This card is a pain in the butt, guys. <laughs> And if they don't see the meat hook, it's kind of like I said when I was going over the deck, you can actually just play this for two mana. That way when they are killing your board and wiping your board, at least they're taking damage. So it's something to think about, I suppose. And it really, I don't know if you necessarily want to go up to two, especially if you're not seeing a lot of aggro. But if you are seeing a lot of aggro, which I think we are going to, then you could probably go up to two of these quite successfully. Night of Dusk's Shadow was pretty good, but it's another one that maybe we don't necessarily want four of these. I do think you want the four Tenacious Underdogs because of that Blitz ability. There's so much removal. There's a big problem, though, with all the other mono black builds or just uh, builds that are running the, um, the Werewolf Honorable Mention that I can't remember the name of right now. Dang, we just went up against it, too. Either way, there's a lot of people running cards that can grab stuff out of the grave, so... It's something to think about for the underdog and maybe another reason why to drop down to two cult conscripts and go up to the four reckoner raids too because they probably are just going to grab this out of the grave and you might not get to return it anyways so yeah we did get to see cut down come into play one time i'm still not convinced that this is the play over an infernal grasp so for now i would keep two of these and two of these shieldred was a beast but we couldn't we didn't have a lot of chances to play it. Not a lot of mana. I guess 23 isn't enough for just the 3-4 on the top end. But <laughs> it should be, technically. Um, we just have so much else to do in the deck, like buff the Evolved Sleepers, uh, buff the Concealing Curtains, buff the Night of Dusk Shadow, bring back Underdog on 4. Like, there's all, just a lot to do. And so you might want to drop down to one of these as well. And it's going to drive me nuts until I um until I check I guess I should probably just type it all out I I thought it was gonna pop up right away no nah, there it is graveyard trespasser yeah yeah if you're running into a lot of other mono black builds then you might want to go up to trespassers too and I think shakedown heavy I I think it would have done more if it just didn't get instant removed uh the few times that we did see it so maybe go down to shieldred go down to Liliana and go up two Trespassers, because one, it is actually a pretty aggressive card. Being able to grab, uh, if a creature card was exiled this way, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. That actually can go a long way. So my honorable mention from earlier, I think we do actually want to squeeze that honorable mention into the build somehow. So go up a couple Trespassers. I don't think you'll be disappointed by any means. Uh, the big issue is when are you actually going to play it? over just like buffing the sleeper or the curtains for example so yeah just something to think about guys uh the invoke calamity no no uh not <laughs> i'm sorry guys i'm butchering card <laughs> yeah invoke despair <laughs> oh man invoke despair could be awesome too but it's the same concept we actually didn't see too much mana even though 23 
should be enough for like a like a one of invoke despair maybe you're still not going to see it that often and you're probably still just going to be plugging it into that mana into sleeper and stuff so okay guys hey let me know what you thought down in the comments and uh yeah if you made it this far into the video y'all are champions and i super duper appreciate you and i will see you in the next video